apologies for the late start. Thank you all for joining. Rob Bonta, California Attorney General. And let our Captain Brown is here as well. Um, good morning, and thank you for being here. Uh, we are announcing today charges that we will file against three suspects who we allege were involved in an organized retail crime ring one that targeted 25 Bay Area businesses and cost those businesses more than $650,000. Before I get into the details, I want to acknowledge and thank our partners who contributed to the success today. And um, we are very proud to be working in partnership and in collaboration with multiple law enforcement agencies to hold accountable those who break the law here in California. And this is a prime example of that teamwork on full display. Uh, I want to thank the Walnut Creek Police Department, uh, including Captain Andy Brown, who is here today to my, uh, my right, your left, and will be speaking shortly. I also want to thank the Contra Costa FBI Safe Streets Task Force, the Concord Police Department, Oakland Police Department, Brentwood Police Department, Tracy Police Department, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, and, of course, my colleagues here at the Department of Justice's Special Prosecutions Section. So all of these entities work together uh, to bring us to this moment for this announcement. Um, crimes are coordinated and organized, uh, as coordinated and organized as they were here, and you'll hear more about the details in a moment. They deserve an equally coordinated and organized response from law enforcement. And that is uh, what we have manifested with our response um, that brought us here today. So thank you uh, to all the members of the law enforcement community involved here for their partnership. Um, and they understand that we need to work together uh, to be successful, and we are. So that brings me back to the details of this case. From September 8th to November 14th of last year, so about a two-month period, there were approximately 25 commercial burglaries and attempted burglaries in the Bay Area that targeted mostly smoke and liquor stores, so tobacco stores, as well as high-end retail stores. All told, these thefts cost businesses, as I mentioned, more than $650,000. So this is a very uh, high-value proposition set of organized retail crimes here. As a result of these crimes, we will charge the three suspects with multiple felonies, including organized retail theft, second-degree uh, burglary, grand theft, and vandalism. It's almost 50 counts of felonies, 10 misdemeanor counts. So let's be really clear that we... Um, are not talking about one-off shoplifting incidents here. Uh, these weren't one-off uh, smash and grabs at your local big box store. We're talking about a series of coordinated, organized crimes that took place over the course of two months. Crimes that were committed by the same group of people over and over and over. Often in the middle of the night, the suspects uh, generally donned dark clothes, masks, and gloves um, to break through security doors and security gates. Twice they stole ATM machines, one from an open Chevron gas station and one from a closed smoke shop. On October 3rd, a suspect crashed a stolen Land Rover through the front window of a Louis Vuitton store in Walnut Creek making way for around a dozen suspects who ran into the store and grabbed more than a quarter of a million dollars worth of product, mostly high-end purses. Two weeks later, on October 18th, the suspects burglarized a discount cigarette shop in Dublin. Three weeks after that, on November 8th, six to eight suspects took a detour south and stole $120,000 worth of Chanel purses from a Nordstrom in San Diego multiple cities, multiple stores, uh, mostly boxes of uh, cigarettes and high-end purses. Then, less than a week later, on November 14th, suspects burglarized a smoke shop in Vallejo. So they covered a lot of ground throughout the state, multiple jurisdictions, multiple counties. And while police interrupted nearly all of the burglaries, the suspects were able to flee thanks to getaway cars ready and waiting for them twice the suspects 
struck police cars as they fled, injuring one officer in one incident. So I'm proud of the work that we're doing to hold these suspects to account for their crimes, for the danger they've put so many innocent Californians in. And California is not alone, unfortunately, when it comes to the threat of organized retail crime. A 2020 survey found that U.S. retailers lose approximately $700,000 per $1 billion in sales to organized retail crime. It's understandable that if it's top of mind for a lot of folks, or that it's top of mind for a lot of folks, and people are worried about their businesses, scared for their families, which is exactly why organized retail crime is a top priority for our California DOJ, for my team, and for me. We're not just here to talk about it. We're here to do something about it, to act as our action shows today. Today's news is just the latest example of meaningful action we're taking to crack down on organized retail crime in our communities. It, it adds to a series of other important actions that we've taken over the last months and years. We're working with law enforcement partners throughout the state to take organized retail crime head on. Just last year, for example, we arrested and charged eight individuals involved in an organized retail crime operation that targeted Apple stores across 11 counties, resulting in approximately $1 million lost. We charged four individuals last year with felonies for the theft of more than $1 million worth of goods stolen from cargo trucks, leaving a Microsoft shipping facility. We charged three individuals involved in a statewide operation targeting Home Depot that resulted in the loss of more than $75 thousand dollars. And last year, we also announced a first of its kind joint commitment between law enforcement, retailers, online marketplaces, all working together so that we can be just as organized and coordinated as the schemes that we are addressing. So that together as a united front, we can uh, beat these organized criminal groups at their own game. Uh, that agreement that I referenced includes Amazon, CVS, eBay, the Home Depot, Meta, Walgreens, and more. We announced a new online portal that allows the public to submit complaints and tips related to retail crimes. Public members of uh, the California public, please use that. We um, can pursue and follow up on those tips. It's at oag.ca.gov slash retail dash theft. Online marketplaces in California are required to include a link to that portal on their sites. So in, in close, let me just say we uh, have much more work to do. Our work is far from done. We know that. And in fact, we're just getting started. We're ramping up. Organized retail crime hurts businesses, hurts retailers and consumers, and puts the public at great risk. It won't be tolerated by us, by our local law enforcement partners, period. We will continue to work together to team up to address organized retail crime in all its forms. Customers deserve to walk into a store without keeping an eye on emergency exits. Workers deserve to clock in for their shift without fear that they may not be able to safely clock out. Business owners deserve to lock up after a hard day's work without worrying about what they might find when they open in the morning. Californians deserve to know that organized retail crime is a top priority and I'm here today to make it clear that at the DOJ and with our local law enforcement partners, it is. As California's chief law enforcement officer, I commit and I promise to do everything in my power to make sure California remains the best place to live, to work, and to do business. And today, that includes charging three suspects who were part of an organized retail crime ring with felonies. Let me say thank you uh, again for joining. In a moment, we can answer some questions. But first, I'd like to invite Captain Brown to say a few words. Captain. Thank you, Attorney General Bonta. Um, on behalf of the Walnut Creek Police Department, our hardworking, dedicated men and women, uh, we appreciate the support from the Attorney General uh, in combat combating uh, organized retail theft. Um, this is something that is obviously pervasive, regional, um, uh, you know, statewide and, and nationally. And we value our relationships with our uh, law enforcement partners, uh, specifically Concord Police Department, the FBI Safe Streets Task Force, 
the Oakland Police Department, uh, and all our other agencies that assisted in this very complex and regional investigation. Um, lastly, I want to recognize specifically our uh, detectives that have been working tirelessly on this case. Detective Matt Smith and Detective Jenna Kohlmeister have just done a phenomenal job with um, this investigation, and it's obviously culminated into an outstanding result thus far. Thank you very much. I do just want to make a special recognition and shout out to Assembly Member Jackie Irwin, who authored a bill that is now the law, which provides for the Attorney General to bring in one jurisdiction, in one county, uh, a criminal complaint that has allegations in it involving uh, potential criminal conduct in multiple jurisdictions. So, as which is a perfect fit for this case. So, thank you to Assembly Member Irwin. Uh, for her contribution to allowing us to bring one case in one place, uh, even though the incident occurred over multiple jurisdictions. Uh, that's Penal Code 786.5. And um, our role here, to be clear, as California Department of Justice, is uh, the prosecution. So uh, our, our local law enforcement partners handle uh, the, the investigation and, and the arrest up to this point. So, again, a... Um, prime example of true partnership working uh, across uh, jurisdictions, multiple local law enforcement, teaming up for a common goal and getting the job done. So uh, with that, I'll uh, open it up to questions and please let me know if your question is for me or Captain Brown. So these are for incidents that were in 2023, uh, in that two-month period, September to November of last year. Uh, as the inv investigation continues and new information is um, learned, uh, we might identify additional connections, uh, but there are none at this point. The hope is yes, and so we have an ongoing investigation into the uh, other aspects of the, the organized criminal conduct here. Uh, we believe, and it is important to uh, hold accountable the three individuals we're announcing um, charges against today. And uh, as is often the case, uh, we take important actions and steps in a criminal case, and then other aspects of the investigation continue. Um, but th these were high-level individuals uh, in this organized retail crime effort, and um, they are being charged appropriately for their conduct as the investigation continues. Approximately how large is the range? Can you speak about that just to understand the significance and give a little more context to the people that are afraid to a little more context of sure. how large this could be? Well, the uh, individuals that were involved in the multiple um, organized retail crime um, incidents in the different Bay Area cities in San Diego that I described were around in the 15 range um, that, that we're aware of. And the, the stealing of the goods is, is often one aspect of a larger set of um, coordinated efforts. There's often a, a fencing component where um, uh, the stolen goods are provided to a, a, another group, person, entity, and then they resell um, the, the, the goods. So that is part of the ongoing investigation as well. Uh, we would not be surprised if we saw that here. That's been a uh, typical part of organized retail uh, criminal efforts. So, but but for, the, for the folks that are, were involved in just these uh, uh, different organized retail crime incidents, 15-ish. Um, Yeah, um, I can add a little bit there and then um, invite the captain to, to, to add additional detail as well. There were multiple uh, uh, incidents, as I mentioned, um, at, at different retail stores. And after one of them, the local law enforcement um, were able to maintain monitoring um, and uh, identify the whereabouts of 
uh, a vehicle that was involved in that theft followed it and um, made an arrest. And so that was in, in real time. Um, and uh, two of the suspects of the three were arrested in that uh, arrest. And then through ongoing investigation, surveillance, other evidence, uh, the third um, is, is being charged. Let's just see if there's any on-topic uh, additional, then I'm happy to go to your off-topic. Which city? I am a generally supportive of uh, technology as a tool to assist law enforcement when balanced appropriately with privacy. And so um, what, that, what those details, what that balance looks like, always important, probably worthy of important dialogue, discussion, and debate. Um, but I think that um, technology could be could assist and there's a potential for that even here in you know in the city and county of San Francisco uh, last summer you said your office was uh, investigating the underground dialogue weekly uh, you know in the early stages where do things stand right now we are aware of uh, that incident um, c continue to be and uh, we do not comment on pending or potential investigations We don't comment on pending or potential investigations. Thank you for the question. Do you want to add anything on the gas tax? Yeah, I would just like to speak uh, briefly to the, to the Walnut Creek incident. Um, in, with regards to the number of uh, suspects involved, in that case, there was easily a dozen suspects, potentially up, up to 15. Um, and we know this because we responded within a minute of the alarm activation at Louis Vuitton, our officers were on scene um, as the suspects were fleeing. Uh, we did get into a pursuit with uh, at least one of the, the vehicles uh, involved. There were several vehicles involved. Um, but ultimately, through a lot of investigative work, and like the AG uh, mentioned, there, you know, using technology is, is very um, you know, beneficial in investigations. Uh, ALPR, some of that technology you talked about, and um, Fully supportive of it, obviously, um, obviously balancing the rights of, of you know, privacy rights as well uh, with regards to investigations. Thank you, Captain. Any other questions? So we're announcing uh, the, the charging or um, imminent charging of three uh, of the individuals involved in the, the larger organized retail criminal um, conduct that occurred last year. Um, we generally have an understanding of, of where the uh, individuals are. Um, it's primarily East Bay. And um, our ongoing in investigation will lead us to the specifics uh, of, of where those individuals are and, and hopefully lead to additional arrests to hold folks accountable for their conduct in these in these thefts, in this organized retail crime. And just to be clear, these are going to be lower levels? Like, are you saying that the three that are officers that you mentioned today are believed to be the higher level people that have been trying to find? Or, so that's three versus a total of yeah. 15 or four, I guess. Yeah. We believe we have among the, the higher level um, actors in the organized retail uh, criminal enterprise. Um, there could be others at their level, maybe even some above, uh, but we think the majority would likely um, be at, at, a, at a lower level than these three individuals. These are um, primary actors, among the primary actors in, in 
uh, the, the planning and the preparing and the co conduct in involved. And uh, so we think they are, they are very important charges that we're bringing. Any other questions? Multiple years in prison. So these are all, again, almost 50 felony counts. We are, you know, clearly in felony land. Um, and, um, of course, there are some uh, individualized assessments based on, you know, w w what convictions are ultimately secured, um, the prior criminal history of individuals. They all are, are part of the, the final um, calculation of, of time. Uh, that could be served, but um, multiple years in in in, prison, in state prison. Are you going to be releasing names and mug shots, things like that? Or? Um, I don't think so at this time, um, but but stay tuned. Oh. So you want to sort of compare what, what 25 in two months, how that compares with maybe broader trends in California? This was a huge spike. This was, you know, th these are brazen. Uh, you know, 25 separate incidents in a, essentially a 60-day period is almost one every other day. And so for us to have the response that we had, you know, being on scene within seconds, um, tracking individuals and, uh, and securing arrests uh, where we saw this major spike um, that was hitting retail store after retail store in this two-month two period um, it was very significant. Um, of course, it's not the only, unfortunately, tragically, not the only organized retail crime happening in California, but uh, this stood out and really uh, was a prominent example that we were responsive to, and I'm, I'm proud that we were. All right. Thank you so much.